Hi there, welcome to the lab. Today I'm going to have a look at this Aneng M113 multimeter. It is billed as a multimeter, although I can kind of see from the packaging here that it maybe has some limited functionality. I'm doing this as part of uh, a series that I'm doing on multimeters that you can buy for under $10. And with that in mind, I actually did pay for this uh, out of my own funds. And so I'd just like to ask that if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Questions and comments are always welcome. The feedback is appreciated and it helps me figure out where to focus my activity. And in particular, I've had a request or two from people who would like to see me reviewing some lower cost multimeters as I have reviewed some uh, higher cost multimeters in the past. Let's get into the box. As you can see, the box is a little uh, beaten up from transit. And oh, so I've gotten the red version. Good to remember. There's a pair of probes here and ouch. These seem like the standard, uh, although the insulation anyways feels a little thicker, but these are the more or less what I would call standard economy probes. Uh, the handles are very sort of a hard plastic. The, the cables are fine. I mean, they're not very long. And the, uh, the jacks, well, you know, they're, they're not, uh, on higher end multimeters, these uh, tend to be a little longer, but that's not a big deal. Okay. There's the multimeter itself, all nicely sealed. Okay, and it's a hard plastic and there's some springy thing inside. Um, it's interesting that the case has some molded areas for a few different kinds of sensors, but I think that might be for other models. And there's an instruction manual that looks like it's Chinese. And another manual that is probably in a few languages. And I imagine, uh, although I really hate these kind of fold out origami manuals, uh, somewhere in here there will be some English. There we go. So. Did I mention that I don't like these origami manuals? So there's the English uh, instruction section here. And if possible, what I'll do is I'll cut away all of the other languages and just keep the portion that's in English that I need. Okay. And that's everything in the box. So it's time to get some batteries in here and power it up. The battery compartment just has a single screw and the screw goes straight into the plastic. Usually you want to see some sort of a threaded ring there because this screw will chew up that plastic over time. A pair of double A's inside and we'll put the lid there. And a little trick I learned from some other channels is that you can find out where the threading is in the plastic by first winding the screw backwards until you hit a little bit of a indent like that. I don't know if you would have heard that, but the screw kind of slips into the groove that was carved the first time. And then the screw should go in fairly smoothly because it's going into a groove that already exists. And so that's a really clever way to lessen the amount of destruction that these self-tapping screws do on the plastic. But uh, it's, uh, it's inevitable that if you're going to take the screw uh, in and out of this unit repeatedly, the plastic is just eventually going to be destroyed. Now initially powering this unit up, powers up quite easily. And looking at the unit, this unit only does a few things. It does DC voltage, AC voltage, resistance, 
continuity, non-contact voltage, and for convenience it has a hold function. And pressing the, uh, if you can tell, there's a little auto indicator. So this is one of the meters that is going to automatically switch modes. Pressing the button just uh, turns it off again. On, off. So there isn't even any option, I guess, other than the non-contact voltage to change modes on this unit. This is uh, fully automatic, given that it only has four kinds of settings. Uh, digital multimeter. So we'll do DC voltage first. I've started using this process calibrator to test DC voltage and DC current. This meter will do DC voltage, it won't do the current. Uh, I'll also be able to use it for resistance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the output into the meter. Now it's going to start to beep because since it's one of these fully auto modes and right now I'm not producing any voltage, it's going to think it's in a different mode. It, it really, uh, the zero volt here is below the uh, sort of read threshold that it gives us on the face of the meter. So I'll just work the voltage up and we'll see what happens. And at 0.2 volts, we can see that it's reading pretty much 0.2 volts, exactly. So a little bit below the range that it actually says it'll sense. So that's a good sign. And now I can bring it up to 0 0.3, 0 0.6. So once again, that's uh, really fairly accurate. I'll just bring it up to 0 0.7, 0 0.89, 1 volt. That really, uh, if you account for rounding, that's pretty much dead on. 2 volts, very good, 3, 6, 7, 8, now I'll go to 10, 10 volts, and that's pretty much the range, I think this goes to 11 volts, pretty much the range for the unit. So you can see that the voltage reading here is pretty good. Now AC voltage, and right now the power is not on, the fluke is in AC volt mode, the NNG is just in uh, its normal default auto sensing mode, and so right now it seems to be sensing this as a resistance. But let's watch what happens when I turn the power on. One more time, just so you can see the performance. So it takes maybe a second longer to react, but in terms of correspondence and accuracy, relative to the fluke, it seems really close. Uh, it may be off by uh, a tenth of a volt at times, but very, very good accuracy for this unit in AC voltage. I'm, I'm really happy to see that. Now, for resistance, this is outputting a resistance of 20 ohms. This is going to go into continuity mode, probably, at, uh, at a low resistance. And so we'll just see what the behavior is, and then I'll start to increase the resistance uh, above 20 ohms. And so initially, as expected, it's kind of, it is reading 20 ohms. Well, it varies. It was reading 20 ohms for a second. Let's, uh, 30. 40, 50, so, okay, so as it kind of goes back and forth across that 50 ohm boundary, maybe, the, uh, the buzzer turns on and off, 60, so now at 60 ohms, clearly off, the, the reading, oh, see, that, the reading appears to be sort of noisy in the resistance reading. So it's relatively accurate, but it's also a little noisy in that it wanders a bit. You can see now it's up to 60. Let's kind of go to a higher value, 200 ohms.
500 ohms. I think that's pretty accurate. The only concern is the wandering, and there doesn't seem to be too much of that. So I think that's a pretty pretty decent showing for resistance. No, uh, nothing to complain about here. For continuity, I'm going to do it two ways. First with the included probes. So you can see that it takes a while to respond. Now I'm going to switch to a set of gold-plated probes. And with these gold-plated probes, you can see that the display reacts right away. But it still takes a while to get the buzzer to sound. But performance is just generally better overall with the gold-plated probes. Non-contact voltage on this unit is entered into by pressing and holding the non-contact voltage button here. And to test it, I have this plug. This is where the hotline is along this edge of the plug. And when this edge of the plug comes close to the non-contact voltage sensor in the unit, wherever it might be, we should see a reaction. So I'm going to press this button down. Now, this unit seems to kind of beep constantly, even though there's nothing in the proximity. Now let's bring the sensor in, or the plug in. And so you can see when the plug is close to the sensor, we get a stronger reaction, a faster beeping, and uh, an indication on the display. So the non-contact voltage works okay-ish. Um, the, the plug had to be within about a centimeter of where the sensor is. It's a little annoying that it beeps all the time. That, uh, that would probably drive me crazy, but at the same time it's a good way of reassuring oneself that it's working. Quick teardown. There are only four screws holding the unit down. We can see a very, really tiny circuit board in here. The main guts of the unit are obscured, so we can't tell what kind of a controller they use, although I expect it's one of those DMM on a chip kind of jobs uh, that does both the LCD control and the multimeter functionality that's included here. This, the only identifiable chip, is uh, a small EEPROM, and that's probably for storing the calibration data that's used for the meter. Uh, we can see the spring contacts to the battery, the speaker, non-contact voltage sensor, some pads for maybe some other model that are not filled here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. This is uh, an extremely, an extremely simple unit. Uh, you will notice that there's no protection here whatsoever, no PTC, no MOV, uh, nothing in that regards. And of course, it, it only claims here to be used uh, or rated for uh, CAT2 usage. In summary, this is a decent device, albeit with fairly limited functionality. The accuracy is good for the functions that it does have. Continuity is slow and there's no dedicated continuity mode that would likely speed it up. Non-contact voltage is acceptable, but constant beeping in non-contact voltage mode is very annoying. For troubleshooting around the house, this would probably be a perfectly fine meter. Its small size means it would be easy to carry around in a toolbox. It's safe to say that anyone serious about electronics would be disappointed by the lack of other measurements that are common these days, such as AC and DC current, capacitance, and diode check. There's no internal protection, not even a fuse, so you'll need to be cautious when using it in a high voltage setting. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time.